boots are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other to children of Erte. If only you could hear all of the <laughs> gabbing that we're doing <laughs> while that intro is playing, because Josh always has to jump in and be like, now listen, children <laughs> of Erte. <laughs> children of Erte. <laughs> yeah. The show is beginning. <laughs> but anyways, as usual, welcome back. We're so excited to be here and to have you tonight. And Adam is here to tell us about our sponsors. Our incredible sponsors, starting with Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can grab an Electrum chest code i said it kind of right that time um <laughs> I, I almost said it again but i don't want to tempt fate so you can find the code somewhere <laughs> on the overlay or bouncing around in chat and thank you so much idol champions for all of the support we also have die hard dice you can get 10 percent off any order with the code erte in their store and they have supplied our cast with we're on the R's now, Revenge Revisors. Ah, revenge yay. Revisors that we get to roll. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that we need revenge on at the current moment. Yes. But I'm sure there will be plenty of opportunities for that. So <laughs> thank you, Die Hard Dice. And as always, we've got Sirenscape because epic games require epic sound i'm adam bradford the cdo at demi plan you can find me on twitter at bad eye adam uh we have so many things going on with demi plane right now uh just so many things and a lot lots of deep development going on but uh you can keep apprised of all the announcements that we have going on on tuesday dev update streams had one this morning halloween special one of my favorite ones <laughs> of the year uh, but you can check those out weekly. And tonight I am playing Silas Jordan, who uh, finally got a little bit of magic that can help him in a fight. Ooh, I like it. Hi, everybody. I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me everywhere on socials at Alicia Marie Body. I am a pretty much a creative artist and performer. And yes, we are in the last week of October, yes. which is like Hail Mary for everybody <laughs> who makes costumes anywhere in the world. Anyway. I see the end of the finish line. Everything's going to be great. Um, tonight. How are your fingers? I, I know. <laughs> my poor fingers. My eyes. Your creative see, fingers. <laughs> uh, to think anymore. Um, but it'll be cool. Everything's going great. So I'm happy. I'm not complaining. I like what I do. Tonight, I am playing Cruz Armstrong, zombie killer, ghoul killer, who, after the last fight, the last episode, Got something in her eye, but you got it out. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Totally fine. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on uh, Twitter as at DreamWisp, streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I am one of the contributors, along with several of the other folks here, to Anansi's Tapestry of Lives, which is in our final couple of hours for the Kickstarter, so please check it out. Um, we are Go closing back. in so cool. on the video, a bit, but uh, it's, it's a book of NPCs for your game. We have voice actors voicing the characters, um, all sorts of cool stuff, so just please check out that uh, we've more than 85 people have contributed to it and we're very excited about it. Um, and uh, tonight I will be playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Obo Lauren. Uh, you can find me tomorrow playing the first time I've ever played this, the Expanse role-playing game. We're playing a one-shot for charity. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow on the Only Play Wizards channel. So come on by and watch me play a belter and <laughs> try to keep everybody alive by keeping the spaceship from falling apart. <laughs> I, I've, I've been doing a lot of research so and I'm, I'm going to, I'm super excited because I've never played this before and I'm always excited to do that, but I'm also excited to be here playing Neb, who is, uh, 
excited to have seen her first zombie, terrified to have seen her first zombie, kind of both. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Hope Lavelle. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. And tonight I am playing your favorite granny for hire, Miss Robin Beckett. <laughs> Yay, and I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am your storyteller and creator of Children of Verte this evening. Um, so thank you all for being here, players for playing, viewers for uh, sticking around and watching with us uh, as we get into the 25th episode of Chapter of Verte. So grab something tasty and settle in. So if you remember last time, um, our party here returned to the train um, where they found Steve, the statue, <laughs> had uh, removed the debris in front of the train and was standing stock still at the side of the tracks. Um, upon further investigation, you found that two of the pocket watches that you have found um, seemed to sort of match up and were absorbed into his body. Um, so you've now lost those two pocket watches <laughs> onto his, I guess they were magnetically attached sort of to his body there. Um, you then began to again search the train. Uh, you decided to go forward first. You crept your way through the tender, which has this pass through, very tight little corners to get through, um, and into the engine where you found a body. Um, uh, Robin recognized this as the person that had died uh, when the train first initially stopped. Um, but as you all were fighting it, as it rose up and tried to kill Neb, as most things do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk to it. It's going to fight me. It's so. going to try to eat you, clearly. Yeah, it's one or the um, other. <laughs> um, as you all were fighting it, uh, Robin snuck over and discovered that it had crawled out of its grave. Um, and that so it is, it is likely a reanimated corpse like a zombie. However, once destroyed, it shattered into millions of tiny little little pieces of glass dust. And I believe that's basically where we left off. Mm -hmm. And Silas had been uh, ma magically shoving it off into Yes, he'd snow, been cleaning right? it, yes. Yeah, because I don't think any of us wanted <laughs> now, to Now, to it. clarify, Silas would not have just, you know, like, brushed it off the train or anything. Yes. He's just getting it out of the walkway <laughs> yes. into a corner. So, yes, you, you know, mean, if yeah. anyone wants to examine the, you know, ice zombie bits, they are still there. Uh, Robin has, has climbed back up or uh -huh. come, come back in. Oh, heavens. Well, how did it go? <laughs> well, we're still here and it's a pile of rocks. What? Diamonds? Something. Something. Yeah, so I guess okay. Oh, well, fascinating. Hmm. Good how, job. How did, how did it go with... I mean, I'm going to ask how it went with you, but I don't even know what you were doing. <laughs> oh. I was trying to get off the train, remember? <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. I was just doing a little train. bit of investigating, and, you know, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, this this dead body was the body in the in the grave and that there wasn't going to be a second dead body who raises you know i was just looking out for us you know but I it that. was the same body oh yes yes it that was. grave was completely empty does it disturb anyone else that the only people that we have encountered in this place since the train did it's weird out of sync thing whatever is going on um that the only people are us and then things that might have kind of almost resembled people, except they were, you know, kind of Morlock-esque. And then now we have something that was like a person's body, but it wasn't a person. Like, do we honestly think, like, are there people here besides us? Well, the only way we're going to find out is to get to another place that has people. If there wasn't... Yeah, so... No, go ahead. Sorry. If there wasn't at the mine, I'm hoping there's going to be at the town past the mine. Is that where we're going next? Well, that's next on the track. The so, track, yeah. Yeah, okay. once, once we get Do the... Do trains go backwards? That's a question <laughs> I've never considered. I, uh, yeah, they... Uh, I guess what I'm saying is, so. like, couldn't Why we go to they? the jungle or whatever that was? Like, whatever the last stop the was jungle. supposed to be? <laughs> I, I don't know. What was the last stop supposed Grab to be? Grab yes, station where you got tundra on. Tundra jungles. <laughs> no, I mean, we go through Same the station. The world. Oh, Neb what's pulls the out, last stop? Neb oh, pulls out her book yeah, yeah. And, and starts and flips back to the map and says, all right, so it's the mine, it's the town of Hollowvale, it's uh, 
the Blackwater Bay, Bell Castle Cap, and, and the Farnsh uh, Wild Wilds. Farnsh yeah, I don't think that's a. I'm pretty sure that's not a jungle because of the climate, but, and Deb just like indicates the world, <laughs> but I could very well be wrong. Yeah, I heard wilds and then I was like, I just immediately went to jungle, but yeah, that makes more sense. But Silas, to answer your question, if we're going to find people, it's probably in the town. So, you know. Well, they're also, I was promised whales. And I think if we go that way towards the town, we will get to the whales. Faster. They're, in, they're, they're wait, wait. in the jungles as well, aren't they? Uh, I don't know. Jungle really. whales. Well, let me oh, tell Robin. you. I'm not a marine biologist. Robin, were you a marine biologist? <laughs> well, you know, I dabble here and there. But... <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> wait, I just want to know who not every whale, Silas. Yeah, like I think the bay, like somebody What's told the... me about whales. Yeah, we were there's... supposed to go whale watching in the bay. And we still will, of course. I'm hoping oh, for yeah. a narwhal, to be honest, but I don't know if they're native to here. I don't I know where narwhals are native to. You know, so I was excited about seeing the whales before I knew that there was a possibility that I could talk to them. And now I'm even more excited. I wonder, because there's that little library back on the tr the back part of the train. I library bunch of books i wonder if they have information on this area you know not just the whales that we're gonna see but any of the wildlife ah ned makes a great point i mean we still have to search this train like a little easter egg hunt you know we gotta go find all the little things and check every nook and cranny but of we this need place. generator and electricity first ah, food would be great. showers <laughs> well, and the electricity to turn on the lights. Experience. And also, yep. might I note, just on the topic where you were talking about how we've met all of these people, we also met ooze, and we met little ice creature things, I don't know what they were, and a moose, and uh, wolves, and all sorts of things. Wait, so it's wait, not are we calling the moose a, a person? No, though? that's what I'm saying. No. Is it's not just people. Strange forms of reflections of people animals um, you know animals are still around yes <laughs> or, or, or the fae folk just take strange forms i mean i really like the the sunny side that everybody's sticking on how do we get this train fired up well, why don't we take a look at what else is in here now that it's not empty. full of zombies. <laughs> hey, hey, Neb, can you just kind of blindly and randomly walk around and find some other horrible threat for us? <laughs> you know, what? Silas, I would take that incredibly personally <laughs> if it wasn't true. If and it I wasn't, wasn't I wasn't true. almost died four times in the last six Listen, days. <laughs> someone had to go first. Yeah. And it wasn't like I was running. And who expects a zombie? Well, I guess now we expect <laughs> zombies. You know what, Neb? It's you're just, you know, adventure just tracks itself to you. That's all. What Miss Robin said. That sounds way better than... I think she uh, mispronounced the danger, reality. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the reality of me running off into danger. That's okay. Well, I agree that we should look around in the locomotive and see if we can figure out how to get the engine started so that we at least get the lights and okay. we're kind of in the locomotive right now right you are you are in the engine of the i mean as many of you can fit you know it's a pretty tight little space two or three people is pretty squeezed in there um so yes looking at this engine room space here um as you all might can sort of picture from uh steam engines you may have seen throughout your lives this is a rugged iron machine it is heavy it is huge it is rusty um every piece of metal just looks formidable and fused um, as you begin to look at the panel in front of you it is a mass of valves and levers um tubing and piping that goes around gauges with you know pressures per pound and uh, water level tankards, which you've noticed are beginning to freeze over the, gra the glass beginning to frost. Um, the main feature that you notice is down at the bottom in the very center of this huge array of gauges and tubing and valves um, is a firebox. It is a metal um, door that swings open and inside, uh, if you look in, you know, it 
as you go to sort of move it, <laughs> scraping against the metal below. It's heavy. It's creaky. It's covered in soot. Whoever, you know, gets close to it, you begin to find soot on your fingers. And beyond that, it is filled with ash and remnants of old burnt wood. In the Miss Robin, forest. did you happen to be a train engineer? <laughs> ah, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the answer is no. I was an intern uh, with the railroad maintenance, and I became a railroad maintenance engineer uh, in intern. But I did learn so how to- So you answered phones. I learned how to weld and safety check all of the railroad tracks, which- And, and fetched coffee? No, no. <laughs> I brought me a cushy internship. Did they have coffee back then? Uh, uh, only the best. Put hair on your chest. Best part of waking up. <laughs> also, Maeve's coffee. So we think we put wood in... So this is a firebox, I'm assuming is what the book says right there. So I think we need fire in that box, and then everything's going to magically start working. Is that the way this goes? Uh, isn't it something where if we don't watch something, the whole thing's going to blow to smithereens? Yeah, I read that. So, Robin, uh, give me a history check for how much <laughs> you sort of remember and glean. We do have a book, but it's a very dense book on railroad, you know, train engineering and, and running. So we'll we'll come to that when you want to. But 23. Yeah. 23. So, yes, Robin, you do know there are lots of ways you can blow a steam engine up. It is very easy <laughs> to blow up a steam engine. You also know that generally for long haul trips they don't let steam engines just like go south <laughs> they keep them going because starting them from dead cold to heating up and going is quite a long procedure um however you are fairly certain that it does begin with starting a fire in that firebox and heating up the water in the tank so that you mm -hmm. can do anything on this train so maybe with this 23, would she also know mm -hmm. that once you start a fire, whether or not the train will start moving? <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> so, that's a very good question. So uh, with that 23, Robin would also know that like most engines, um, there is a throttle. Okay. So, you know, currently, you know, you guys felt the train break, right? Clearly mm -hmm. this last engineer saw this, you know, avalanche stopped the train, um, you know, which caused everybody to, to get thrown to the ground. But, you know, the brake has been activated. The throttle has been placed, you know, into neutral. So, you know, you're not... Um, it's not just going to, like, suddenly start <laughs> moving forward. Okay. Oh, well, all right. Just like anything else, we need to start a fire. That'll get things going. Okay. I mean, make sure we have enough really wood to keep that. it going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, let's get some wood in there. So we I'll... need some wood, though, right? Yes. And si Silas just starts walking over, and he's going to pick up as much as he can carry okay. of the wood and then telekinetically... He is going to pick up about 60 pounds more <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, move it behind him and then uh, start moving that towards. Uh, All right. So as you look behind you, there is this little ladder that allows you to get up to the top of the tender and reach in and collect wood and bring it down. You can see there's even a place to kind of store some um, as you do kind of a, you know, fireman chain um, <laughs> to kind of keep your supply going. Um, looking inside uh, so you're starting this out. Um, Silas, give me a perception check. Can you do that for me? I would happily do that. It would be a zero. Are we looking Fantastic. Are we looking in on the, the firebox at yes. this point? C can I help with that? Because you I'm may. waiting for the wood to go in and I'm what ready is to light your, my hands. What is your uh, uh, perception bonus? Uh, mine is a plus five. A plus five, okay. Looking That's in. That's much better. <laughs> with the two of you together you would think i wouldn't run into danger and i would see it before i ran in but no you know um so yes looking you know looking into this firebox you see there's there's just there's so much ash and wood debris um you know and and even what's fascinating as you look in you can see a little bit of daylight poking in through the grate and the ash pan below 
Silas, do you see all of that stuff in there? Well, it's almost like I saw it in my head, um, like someone described it. But um, but for <laughs> whatever reason, I'm not piecing together the significance <laughs> of, of what is being said. I'm it's, sorry, what are you seeing? What are you seeing over there? Well, obviously the fire burnt out and there's just a, a lot of leftover ash and charcoal and stuff we probably need to at least clean it out a little bit before we get another oh, fire clean it out and then silas is going to actually like kind of lightly drop whatever yes. wood he is carrying telekinetically <laughs> and then he's going to start sweeping ash out of the the thing <laughs> like, okay as you start to like you this thing is like five feet deep this i mean not deep but like forward right okay. uh this is a big oven right and it's it's you know two and a half feet wide and it's just this long hallway of a of a firebox in front of you and as you start sweeping stuff out it is so thick i mean immediately silas you are just covered in soot and ash i mean you look like an engineer <laughs> oh, and, and, and as soon as this happen. starts to happen so I was like, oh, and then he uh, <laughs> telekinetically, the hat lifts off of his head mm -hmm. and uh, and floats back like, you know, maybe, I don't know, 10, 10 or 15 feet, like whatever he think is, thinks is safe from the soot. Yes. And then uh, <laughs> but then he is going to pay extra attention to make sure that it is secured somewhere where it doesn't just yeah. blow off. Gotcha. Um, you know, or, or, or whatever, but but he uh, tries to save his hat from getting soot all over it. Silas, Silas, uh, check in there if there's like a, a lever that, that opens up the ground and then the soot will just fall through. Oh, right? that makes a lot more sense. Does anyone? And then Silas goes, oh, I have a light. And then he, uh, he picks up, uh, is there a piece of, I don't know, like wood debris or something? Yeah. Uh, so stuff. he he just picks up one of those and then he lights it up mm -hmm. and then he throws it in there to, sure. to you know 20 20 feet of light and he's looking for any kind of lever so as it goes you don't see any lever but it actually tumbles through the grate down and lands in this pan beneath the grate um you hear a little clang but it's it's kind of deafened again by the amount of sort of ash that is being held in this pan beneath the grate there's like a pan kind of like in an air fryer when you got like, it's like dripping, like the drip pan or whatever. There's like something bacon like drippings. That. Yeah. The, 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 yes. Yes. Farisa. <laughs> There's like a bacon dripping pan underneath here. So maybe we got to get outside the train and then like dump that pan. That would make sense because you probably don't want to just be dumping ash and soot and leftovers. On the tracks. All. Yeah. I'll go I'll go dump the pan. Where do I need to go? Um, outside would be my right. best guess, but I don't actually know. Uh, Robin will go with Feruza. Okay. So Robin and Feruza, you come down, you begin to walk down the front of this engine. It is this long cylinder with, again, just tubing and piping all along the side, different kinds of smokestacks and steam release up along the top. You even see the, uh, the, the sort of... Um, the whistle channels that sort of make that cord of the whistle up at the top and then the light up at the front. And as you're walking down and kind of trying to gauge where Silas and Neb were looking, um, as you're peering underneath, you see the glow of that uh, uh, piece of wood that Silas threw in. It is indeed resting on a pan that is sort of supported, suspended underneath the firebox grate. Hmm. Do you see anything else besides the pan and the glow of that ember, Robin? <laughs> I don't know if I want to crawl under the train, not knowing what what else might be under there. Can we see any movement? Like, it, I, <laughs> I'm trying it. to understand. Like, maybe a we shadow. Know they're there? You can yeah, maybe okay. possibly see a shadow on the ground. You know, it's if you don't see a lot, it's just these grates on the floor of the firebox, and then there's this pan underneath it, but it's open at the sides to allow oxygen and airflow. Um, so you're just seeing a little bit of that light filtering in now that there's no fire in there. All right. Did you find I the guess, pan? I think, yeah, we see the pan. It's like, it's right in front of us. I mean, I guess that's where, that's where we're supposed to be. I don't know. We're Is just, it heavy? Well, we haven't, tr you know, Silas, we all don't have telekinetic powers. We have no idea how heavy it is. I'm no, some of us have muscles. <laughs> Maeve, I'm going to get out here and come get you in two seconds. 
That was that was telling you you're fantastic. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is here. I appreciate it. So Bruce is sort of just gonna I mean, should I just crawl sunglasses. into this train? Uh-huh. All right. She's gonna look underneath. As you go underneath, I mean, the wheels, Feruza, yeah. you're tall, but these wheels yeah. are five feet, six feet tall. I mean, these are gigantic wheels here that are strapped into the, the pistons and everything that make this thing run. So as you kind of duck under, you have to bend, but it's it's roomier than the caves. Um, okay. As you come around, you can indeed see that there is sort of a central portion of this pan that looks like it'll slide out and the other sides are a bit slanted allowing the ash to just kind of slide right out from underneath. I wonder why it wasn't uh, dropping manually. I mean, I thought this thing was supposed to be state of the art. Maybe I'm wrong. I just um, assumed it would be cosmetic. Did she just say it was state of the art? I thought it would be cosmetically 1933. 1920, but inside, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like one of those like Oh, you, you thought it was a facade and not really. A, okay, yeah. It was a computer no. wrapped in an iron horse. <laughs> yes. I seem to remember that they, they were very proud of the fact that this was all original or, you know, redone to make it look. I'm, I'm yelling into the pan so she can hear me. I mean, we're probably pretty glad because, like, I don't think that we have just like a charging station around where we're stuck right now. So well, I guess we're glad, glad it's old. Well, they're not going to be glad did, when they get served already papers the by my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you t you got this. You, you've got this. I'm going to go to the I, front of the train. You take your time. We'll get this all cleaned up. All right. All right. We're just going to climb under and just sort of, I guess, take it, pull it, and then tilt it a little bit. All right. Feruza, give me an athletics check, please. Oh, great. You sent the right person. Okay. <laughs> 12. We're off to a good start tonight. We sent so, the right person. <laughs> you pull again the screech, the noise of cold metal against metal that's been heated and cooled and heated and cooled and heated and cooled. So, you know, so many times over, you can't even imagine it. You pull an horrible chalkboard kind of noise and you get it about halfway. And yes, the soot begins to fall. Ugh. onto the tracks, onto the, the snow beneath the train here. Um, it is, again, immediately a cloud of soot up around you. Everything you're wearing is instantly sort of covered in this Girl gray face, dust. Mm. Um, <laughs> whatever significant bathing experience you and Silas had <laughs> two days ago is just for naught now. Um, <laughs> um, it's in the air <laughs> as you cough a bit. Um, but it does God. seem to be doing the trick. You think maybe with one more pull, you could fully clear it and all of the ash would fall. This is ridiculous. And she says it like she says it with such force that you guys literally feel the train like tremor when she says it, because without realizing it, her emotions have caused her to cast thaumaturgy. <laughs> her voice says this is ridiculous, super loud, like a loudspeaker, like at a concert. And she was like, uh, I think I figured it out. She says quieter. <laughs> is she, is she like really, really on? angry, or like what happened right there? I think maybe I it's the acoustics of the, the the angle of the yeah, that's true. Trade it's just to the room right. to the yeah. I was kind of hoping it was something else. Are, are you angry. okay though? Yeah, I think I have everything. I think I might need a significant bath after this. Well, that's well, what we're trying to get to. Yeah. That, that's right. a, the good news. Once this is done, well, it'll be showers, but yes. We don't have a tub uh, in our room. You do not. We have a well, how are we supposed to bathe in Didn't this? Didn't you see the jacuzzi? <laughs> yeah. Back in the car, yeah. they keep not, none of you just wanted that's to go That's probably explore. in the werewolf room. <laughs> I'm just going to camp out underneath this train for the rest of the trip while you guys figure it out. If well, maybe okay. you can find the werewolf. Or we, we could whip. just get the heat going. That's better on you. Feruza, you've you've done such a good job. Just, I'm sorry, you're all full of soot and stuff. Can you just pull a little harder, and then we'll get this going? Yeah, yeah, Thank I got you. it. I got it. All right. Uh, one last athletics check. You guys are asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 25. Ooh. There we go. You pull it out. Now it's just like butter. Again, all of this soot, but now you you know you sort of 
put up the the pan to sort of protect yourself as it falls out. Um, all of you up top, you begin to hear the clatter as some of the larger bits of this are sort of falling down through the grate. Uh, more of the ash is kind of dipping through. Um, let's see, uh, Neb, you had noticed in your cursory thing that there is like a little poker rake with a really long handle here in the cab um, that looks like it would reach all the way to the back of this thing of this firebox to like get stuff off of the yeah the just kind stuff. of move stuff around poke it whatever's in there um okay. you know so there you know you can help dislodge anything more and kind of clear out the whole firebox yeah. Feruza, you then shove that pan back into place and uh it yeah now all of the soot and debris seems to be beneath the train and your firebox is clear but don't start the train yet i'm still under here and she's gonna try to scuttle her way i don't think it happens that fast <laughs> you, you know what it's worth waiting do you guys want to stay under here do it maybe to push the train from underneath i could try that do you think it'll work are you that strong well, I've never she probably, tried, yeah, actually. she's not going to need to push us the whole way. Well, hmm. no, I think this is more just academic. Faruza, if you think you can, uh, you shouldn't have to push us the whole way, but that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Can you imagine me pushing a train? Is it yeah, I don't, I don't even know what the DC of that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do those strongman Impossible competitions. Impossible is like a 30s. <laughs> they do those strongman competitions where they, like, you know, pull big buses and things and you're magically amazingly <laughs> strong why could i once again i'm not saying you're supposed to pull the train all the way around but if you wanted to try to pull it like an inch or two that'd be super cool i've never seen a strong man competition now however have you seen a strong woman competition i've seen neither every day uh, feats of strength <laughs> have never every been my forte well, uh, if we ever get internet access again, I'll show you a couple of the, the videos on the internet. Neb, um, your kinks are becoming quite evident as we uh, continue well, on this journey. I mean, I'm it's not a good thing. I'm not shaming, but that's mostly just, you know, idle scrolling when I get bored. You just end up watching really weird things. Anyway, if you're not talk algorithms. Oh, yeah. Veruza, mm -hmm. are you safe yet? Uh, or are you still yeah, under there? I'm fine. It's just really cold out here. What happened dark. to Miss Robin? I don't yes, know. Miss we'll... Robin went around the front. What are you looking at, Miss Robin? Don't start the train. Robin's in front of the train. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robin uh, just wanted while she's out here because yes. you know she was a railway maintenance engineer yes. intern, uh, and she learned how to safety inspect railroad tracks okay so where this avalanche had happened on uh -huh. the tracks uh -huh. uh she just wants to inspect them and make sure that they're still aligned that way if we if and when we do get the train running it's not going to derail fantastic uh let's do another advantage history check with proficiency if you don't already have it yep. okay give me something good uh 23 yeah, ooh, you were the queen of 23 today. Um, uh, yes, there is a little bit of damage. Um, as you start to you know, come down the tracks and notice, you've noticed a lot of stones. Uh, the smaller ones clearly got sort of, you know, jammed in and have somewhat bent a few of these tracks a little off to the side. All right, we can get the fire going, but we're not moving the train, okay? Okay. I don't think we were moving the train anyway, but oh yeah. Oh boy, this is gonna take some time. And and Robin will go yeah. back, uh, but she will take a mental note of what she's gonna need to do to fix this. Okay, um, so you know that uh, you know it's gonna take literally <laughs> a sledgehammer, um, some wooden blocks, a couple of people. Sometimes they use levers and things. You know, and we're talking about the old school way of doing this. Uh, a, a bunch of strong people just kind of forcing and using leverage to sort of pop this back into place. Um, I will even offer, as you come back to the train, you pass by Steve with a little bit of longing in your heart. <laughs> it's been a long time, Robin. I Just, you're going to get that hug one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The big, strong statue <laughs> as, as you walk past it. 
stuck still silently in the cold. Oh. Okay. I'll make my way back. Okay. Uh, Maeve, what's going yes. on for you during all of this? Uh, I I sat down as soon as I could find a place to sit kind of in the corner since we yes. had climbed around the side of the train. There's a and little I'm seat just... in the engineer's side, yes. Yeah, I, 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 um, I'm I sort of over in the corner sitting down and sort of looking around. Um, I had thumbed through the uh, the mm -hmm. book, but just sort of looking at the 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 room to see if there were any signs of the people who were here before of how they were tending to it if there are signs of a struggle or something that might have happened here mm -hmm. to them um all right let's do this a perception place. okay perception check it's a dirty 20 dirty 20. So the book that you have is this highly technical book. Um, you have come across, and this is, I was not able to finish this handout before today, but uh, we will have it hopefully for you next time. Um, you do come across sort of a diagram of a steam engine cabin, uh, what each of the levers and valves and gauges are for um, and sort of their names. Um, as you're looking through that, you do catch that the brake is like fully engaged, a hard full engage on the brake. The throttle is completely closed. So whoever was operating this train really went for the hard stop on this. Um, you do see some blood on the edge of a gauge at about head height of someone a bit shorter than you. Um, but sitting down now, if you were kind of looking at it, you feel, oh, yeah, tipping forward. I might see that happening. And it looks like an impact or it looks like a streak? Like an impact okay. on, on sort of a sharp corner of one of these gauges. You know, so there's all just hard iron, uh, unforgiving it's you know. likely that that person didn't do the stop themselves. Somebody else probably stopped the train. Would that be no, a your guess is, you wouldn't be prepared? Your guess is that the stopping of the train was just, it threw you all to the floor, uh, mm -hmm. was just so violent. Okay. This person um, potentially knew the risk to themselves, but... And from, from here, what, what can we see? like what what would the pov be from where they were standing looking yeah at? so as you lean to the side because you're really right where the engineer would be the person driving this train and you know again even on your cursory thumb through there are i mean just procedure after procedure after procedure of how to get the train running how to run the train how they but it i mean they are all dozens of steps long um so this is a complex job and that I think that what you're grasping from your read on this is that the engineer is driving. This is not a push a button and sit around and wait. There is a constant feel for uphill, downhill, slow, stop, coast, um, you know, break a little, break a lot, blow the whistle there. You know, you've seen whole pages of the different whistle codes for what you're supposed to do at different crossings. Um, so this is a complex job. You have to be very, very aware and focused. And so, but there is a spot where if you just lean to the left out of the side of this cabin, you get a really clean view in front of you. Um, you can see the mountain where that avalanche came through. You can see the track ahead, um, you know, where it's been cleared. You can even just see a little bit of Steve standing off to the side. Okay. Um. And, you know, turning to look back, you see the full length of the train. It's a really pretty great vantage. <laughs> Looking back, is there anything about the outside of the train that we hadn't, like the cars that we hadn't been able to explore or walk around? Um, you know, you've looked at most of the trains, most of the cars. There's the tender right behind you. Then there's the sort of common, right, were you guys up front? No, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> of the two, there's the two passenger cars. There's the common car with the the employees and the di the dining room and the lounge. Then there's the car with all of the um, uh, your quarters. I think those are up front. I'm trying to remember what order it's in. But um, then there's the uh, 
sort of luggage car, or am I switching it again? I don't know. The, the order I've got is got? locomotive, tender, baggage car, uh, our stuff, the lounge car with the employee stuff, caboose. Fabulous. That's what we'll go with. <laughs> My book is so full of notes. I don't know what page that's on. You said locomotive, tender, baggage car. Uh, tender, baggage car. Uh, personal cabins. Yeah, the our cabin with the special right. that one. makes sense lounge employee, car back. employee car yeah. you know employees are at the back that's what i was right thinking. yeah and yeah because the we were is... thinking that they that what we saw on the the building order may have been reversed may have been from reversed. what we yes. yeah. employees okay. are at the back near the caboose which makes sense um yeah. so the caboose though is the only car that really stands out to you it's the only one you have not really explored yet cool. um from here the main thing you see is it has this wonderful little nook that sticks up at the top this little crow's nest um you know, that pops out up above and you can see there are windows in it. Um, you know, and, and again, maybe in some of the diagrams in this book, you've noticed that that's a way for the whoever's back there, the second set of engineers and, and Stoker to be able to poke up and take a look and get a vantage and help as best they can up front. All right. Um, well, it looks to me like they were steering, going along and saw the avalanche happen or something on the tracks that made them stop short. They weren't able to protect themselves, bashed forward, bashed their head. Mm. And uh... I mean, I do remember it was kind of a, a very sudden stop and we all got thrown against that wall. So I, it wouldn't surprise me. But looking back, there is another spot to sit on top of the caboose to, to look forward. So we have two good vantage points to look forward or backward. Was there anything else in there about just getting the engine going so we could get the lights on? Was there? So uh, let's do an intelligence check for this one, because this is going to be about deciphering all of these long, hard. That one I would love to come on over. <laughs> then, <because laughs> yep, just all right. Wants to like get this investigation one thing done. You can add investigations if you'd like to to those. Uh, okay. My investi So my investigation is plus five. My intelligence is plus three. I don't know which. We'll you see. Let's add. see. What do we roll? Maybe I'll let you put in both. Okay. You're really putting your heads together. So uh, it's actually a natural twenty. Yes. <laughs> so, nice. so we're at a thirty. Over, right? but maybe just like <laughs> so I'm at a twenty-three before I add anything else. On. Great, fantastic. Jeez. So you're at practically, you know, impossible levels here. Um, as you go through again, I said there are detailed procedures on how to do this. And as you begin, yes, everyone, take a drink of in celebration. Um, so in order, basically everything runs off the steam pressure, it powers the electricity, it powers the train, um, it powers getting water from the tender into the tank when you're not uh, at a station where you can do that externally. Um, so as far as you can see, the sort of first stages of getting this train up and running is to get that fire going. One thing you're also fairly certain is that probably a lot of the water in the water tank, both in the engine and in the tender, is probably pretty cold, if not frozen. So it's going to take a little while because you've got to get that fire and that water up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit before it starts boiling and making steam. Um, at which point you can then turn on the injector, which will then use the steam pressure to pump more water into the water tank up front, into the boiler, uh, which then you can then switch back to steam and use that to power the engine. Uh, there is a whole procedure on how to run the train. It is a very step-by-step, <laughs> -step, be careful kind of thing. Now, while the firebox is heating up, it tells you that you will need to, you will also need someone called a greaser that is going to go around and make sure that all of the different areas are all <laughs> greased up, lubed up. Uh, any place that needs oil will get it. There are, again, very specific instructions on how to do that. Um, and that's mostly it. Get that fire going, clean out the ash as you did, drain out all the condensers, um, lube up all of the moving parts. And once that is set to go, uh, everything should start working for you again. You can start to start up the train, but this process will probably likely take a few hours and you're going to have to keep that fire hot. Remember that jacuzzi I was talking about, you know this how long it. it takes to heat up. <laughs> it's that. 
it's it's we need to heat the water we need to get that hot it'll take some time it'll need to circulate and i don't know we need to just get fire going how much longer do we have before sunset I'd say about half a day well if we start now we should get this going before the sun goes down and then we'll have electricity and everything before it gets dark I'd add if anyone can speed that up in any way, if anyone can help with the <laughs> melting of the water, uh, of the ice and heating the water. and uh, Also, someone's going to need to check on uh, everything that needs to be oiled. <laughs> Who wants a to greaser? Greaser. It's, it's, it's not, it's not a, a 1950s uh, car <laughs> fanatic. It's I a, mean, it is. Well, it yeah. is too. <laughs> a word can do many things at once. Well, uh, if, if I can fit in all the places, I don't mind doing it. Okay. So and I'll, I, I, can I, help I don't with... mean to like, you know, kind of just be a downer here, but like, do we know that, it, first of all, what kind of grease or oil is it? And do we know where that is? And do we know if we have enough? So based on your natural 20 of these technical diagrams, there are at least three or four different types of grease thin greases, thick greases, uh, some that are pure, some that are more crude, uh, but it has a very careful, clear list. As I said, this is like, you turn to, you know, uh, you know, 20 dot FB slash 30, uh, and you find all this, the um, requirements that you need. So it tells you exactly what you need. There should be stock of it on the train. In fact, probably in that luggage car, you might've seen a couple of barrels of different things. Um, again, you haven't been in the caboose yet. You don't know what's in there, uh, but there's a clear list of what to use in each of the different places. Now, uh, looking at the diagrams, you can see some of the places you have to apply grease are these tiny little ball bearing areas. You're gonna have to use a giant wrench to undo you know, these hex, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Hex uh, screws that are the size of your head uh, and then get nuts. in there. Yeah, lug mm -hmm. nuts. And then get in there with a brush covered in grease and, you know, grease it all up. I mean, it's going to be a job and a half. Well, we should at least get the fire started to get the, the water starting to get warmed up. And then let's go down the list, get this going. All right. So basically, if you are looking to get this train started, here's how I'm going to do it. Someone's mm -hmm. going to have to be the stoker. Their one job is going to be watching that fire, stoking that fire, making sure it stays hot Nib. and it's going. Well, before, before yes. we do, is the stoker the person feeding the you fire? You will be feeding the fire. It also involves spreading it out. You need a really even, you need to cover that every corner way back into that five foot deep firebox. Um, consistently feeding it. Now you don't want to overfeed it. You don't want it to lose oxygen. You're just drafting the fire, keeping it going. I mean, I'm happy to do this, but uh, I'm not strong enough to really be throwing a lot of wood around. And it Before sounds like we... once I get the fire started, I'm not sure I'm going to be very good at the rest of it. Before we get too far into that, let's figure out everything we need. To. Yes. So yeah. the the, these are the different jobs. So a stoker, that'll be, basically this is gonna take you four hours. Um, we need a stoker who's just gonna be on that fire. We need a maintenance person who's gonna take care of the ash, drain the condensers, check everything, make sure that everything's in the right place and working well. Um, then we need a greaser who's gonna go around and lube everything up. And then we need the engineer who's basically just gonna spend this time studying up on how to run a train um, so that there is some kind of general, <laughs> natural, uh, instinctual knowledge about it. Um, so those are four jobs. You guys, of course, can split them up, double up uh, however you want. If you find that you're not the right person for it and you want to switch, you can, but this is the next four hours kind of job. Well, I think, uh, Maeve, what do you think about becoming a train engineer? I second that. Uh, I mean, you already know so much. With the book. That sounds like a. <laughs> you want to drive a train? Like a homework. <laughs> we like Maeve to team to do, to do mean, our homework. Honestly, Maeve, Someone here every was time we find a book, you grab already. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just write off everything that we need to do. I I trust that you're going to be Fine. able to find all the information in there. But <laughs> I just. If that's what you want. 
What do you want, Maeve? This is a team effort. Well, I, I think that as an as the the intern of of the train world, uh, it would seem like. Uh, but she was an intern at maintenance, and one of the jobs is a maintainer, maintenance person. That's true. So oh. I, I mean, Miss Robin, like, are you? A, but what? It, what's the? Is the greaser different than a maintenance person? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The greasing is such a big job that that is all you're going to do. Maintenance will go go after the greaser and double check. Um, but greaser is mostly going to be, the condensers are filled with water. They might be frozen. Um, you know, it was clearing the ash pan was part of maintenance. There may be more work there to do. Um, it might be clearing the ash out of the tubing in the smoke box in the front. Um, mm -hmm. It is a lot of sort of cleaning up, making sure everything is good and working condition to go. I think... I think that Silas would make a great stoker because he can use his mind to keep everything even. And I think that, you know, maybe Neb and Feruza would make a great greasing team. You know, Neb is small, he get in the tight places, but Feruza's mm -hmm. strong and can work on those big bolts. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And then you do maintenance and Maeve does engineering and- Or we there's, vice versa. Yeah, there's five of us and so, you know, if somebody needs help, we can shift around, give each other help. What do you think, Maeve? All right. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right, get some water fire in there. I'll get started. Like and then we'll go grease up some stuff. And then right. start taking off her jacket um, so and I putting it to the side. I will give the list of the proper greases yes. and where they go. Yes. To Neb and Feruza. All right, mm -hmm. so Neb and Feruza are greasing. Mm -hmm. Here, Maeve's I'm going um, to put the Maeve. The, are you engineering? I, I have I have been voted to engineer. You're <laughs> engineering. Um, Silas is stoking, and Robin, your main your maintenance. I think so. All right, maintenance crew. Um, Robin, at this point too. Um, you know, you know that it's the, a, a fifth job <laughs> that is not in the book is also fixing that track. Um, so you can decide if you want to somehow use the steam power from the engine to help you do that or not. But uh, at any point, you can let me know that you want to start tackling that job. I, th I think if if we get into like a, a, a groove and mm -hmm. I can do all the maintenance on the train and I mm -hmm. feel good enough to step away, I would probably like to steal Feruza to help with the okay. pledging. All right, let's start. So this is going to be basically, we're going to condense these four hours a little bit. You all are going to be mm -hmm. crazy busy for the next four hours. Um, mm -hmm. You will not be done until the sun is setting <laughs> in the winter sky above. I want so. to rest. <laughs> Just want to rest. To rest. <laughs> Silas, let's start with you. We got to get this fire going. <clears throat> so I know you're going to, sounds like you're going to use some of your telepathy to help you with that. But I am going to need an athletics check for anything that you're doing yourself. You have this long, you know, six foot long poker <laughs> shovel rake um, that you can use to spread it. You've been instructed that this wood needs to be really flat and level. You don't ever want those flames getting too above there. You want to close that flue as often as you can to keep the heat in, but let in enough oxygen so that it doesn't smother itself. So athletics check, please. That sounds far more complicated than Silas was signing up for. <laughs> yes. I think all of this is going to be more complicated than what we expect, but that's why we put Maeve in charge. That is a one on the die. Wow. Die. And that oh, would no. be a total of. Off to a great start. You said athletics four. Athletics. Fantastic. Um, Silas, you get a good fire going, but you find that you smother it. It's, it's a very common thing to happen with steam engines. You start to get excited that there's fire in there and suddenly you put too much fuel on top and the fire goes out. This will add an hour as you start to have to sort of start over and keep this going again. Um, the second time around, you do get it going. You've learned your lesson, um, but this is now a five hours until you can take a shower, do anything else. 
Um, all right, that is Silas stoking. Silas, you very quickly are sweating bullets. Um, your hands, the calluses from holding that, uh, you know, you can find gloves. There's a bunch of sort of workman's gloves around, but you're still through the leather of those gloves, getting calluses, everything is covered in soot. As you start to wipe your face, as the sweat is dripping down, you're leaving streaks of just black charcoal across your face. Um, sweat getting in your eyes, the heat, you know, blowing up out of that firebox. You can use your foot to do the pedal to open and close the, the door on it. Um, and every time you open it, you, you just don't want to again because of that blast of heat in your face. Please I, give me a Sil constant. Go ahead. Uh, Silas eventually does step back and just opens that with telekinesis. <laughs> okay, gotcha. To try to ease that a bit. And I then, will you still know. ask for a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Um, so that's actually pretty good. Let's see. So, um, 21. All right. Ooh. You are able to hold back. You, you know, figure out a way, you know, like the, again, like the bandits, you put, uh, you know, a Ooh. handkerchief across your face that helps with some of that. While you're still extraordinarily uncomfortable, you don't find it quite as exhausting as it could be. And Silas is just kind of, uh, you know, humming under his breath, you know, most of the time. And then eventually he's like, I couldn't start the fire, <laughs> but now it's burning. Uh, Gotta get these train wheels turning. And it's just like making up songs okay. the, the last That's thing perfect. you're going to notice as you start to get to the end of this five hours of stuff, I mean, this is five hours of just every few minutes shoveling more stuff in there, opening it to spread it around, you know, closing it, waiting, checking it. I mean, it's just, it requires every ounce of physical and, and stick to itiveness that you have. As you start to get towards the end of that five hours of just constant work, you notice with a sigh that your wood supply is at least half gone. And then Silas is just going to yell whether they can hear or not. Thiruza, we're going to need to chop some logs. <laughs> and then he just lets out like a Ric Flair. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, we're going to go on to maintenance with Robin. Um, from We're going to be a television show. Maintenance with Robin. <laughs> I watch that. Sunday mornings at 11. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. It's a new NPR radio show. <laughs> Welcome to maintenance. <laughs> with Robin Beckett. Um, Bob Vila, special guest. <laughs> Robin shows up in, in like, in, in, she's got her overalls and yeah. tool belt yes. on. 100%. Yeah. And her yeah. ear cap. Um, all right. So, Robin, um, you have your list of things that you need to check. You have your expertise. You know, you have some, you know, understanding and, and uh, basic instinct around the railroad. Um, you know generally the things that need to be checked. And you definitely want to spend a little time going behind your greaser and your stoker and just making sure everything's kind of going back. In fact, you're probably the person who went to Silas and was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> before the, the fire went out um, and gave him a few pointers on how to how to not smother at the time before. Um, but, you know, this kind of maintenance is really more of a gut check. It's, you know, oh, that, you know, that uh, lug nut looks a little loose. I think that needs tightening. Um, so I'd like a wisdom check from you, Robin. Okay. Ooh. Let me see something. Oh, it's a nat 20. Yay! Yay! Oh, you guys. Yay! Wow. Who knew you could actually like run and a train? And she made so up the hour that Silas blew away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> with that, you're going around and checking. You catch things. Every It's just coming back to you in like waves, whatever that like mind palaces that you have it just opens its doors and you're going oh right the, the rods and the cylinders and the you go around you find things that need emptying you run into the cabin next to silas and find a valve that you open that just lets water drip out and make sure that clears out so that you can finish it up and fill it with oil again so you're clearing things before the oilers get there the greasers get there so that they are ready to go and you do end up it still takes the five hours for silas but you reduce your four-hour maintenance time to three hours um, going through and figuring that you do now have an extra hour uh, if you would like to go look at those railroad tracks. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. As you go, using all this maintenance, you know, knowledge that you have and the natural 20 that you rolled, um, 
you're pretty sure that if you could wedge an iron bar underneath one of the, that point in the track where there's a dent and put enough pressure down on it from the other side, you could pop it back into shape. Um, but the amount of pressure and force that you would need on that iron lever on the side is more than you think even your Feruza uh, could exert. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, so could I kind of fall back onto my substitute physics teacher <laughs> here? <laughs> And like, you know, you, you have you use a lever. Uh-huh. Well, you're already enough. using a lever. Right. <laughs> you're doing I... the pressure down instead of up. <sighs> um, but uh, you do think, you know, let's give it, yeah, let's do a, um, let's do an investigation. Okay. Mm. I can look at this DC It's no you. good. It's an eight. <laughs> it's an eight. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take. Yeah. Uh -huh more mm. more than human strength well as as it is right now robin just kind of looks over her shoulder and at steve and just kind of bats her eyes bats her eyes <laughs> well hey there big buddy i don't suppose you'd like to help out an old lady here <laughs> you get no response he is still dead still but you do notice it he's only got two of these pocket watches and there are now you know it's starting to look pretty clear that there are pattern spots where the where two more might fit and it actually was on robin's mind why she wanted to check the train so badly is because mm. she wants to find those other pocket watches like mm -hmm. more than anything she's easter is her favorite holiday <laughs> <laughs> she loves searching for easter yeah. so um so if if that crosses her mind then yes. you know she she will clear off as many of the rocks as she can she'll get as far as she can to clearing mm -hmm. to where this is probably going to be like the last thing she needs yep. to do um and she probably doesn't want to search the train without everyone else there, but if there's something that she can do, maybe she can just do the, the first car or something, knowing that, you know, well, the, I guess, what's the next thing? There was a baggage. So and it then could there be was baggage, the... your personal cabins. <laughs> I know, we got the baggage. Um, baggage, <laughs> personal cabins. Well, I mean, so engine, tender, baggage, personal cabins, uh, common rooms and employee quarters, and then the caboose. I mean, what I'll do is is kind of go back on my maintenance run and kind of just kind of just over people's shoulder. You wouldn't mind if I just <laughs> slipped into the back and did a little searching, would you? I mean, I'll, I'll have, I'm happily happy. I'm happy to wait if you guys need. And I'm just asking the general general group <laughs> group. I mean, if there. you think everything looks okay. <laughs> They're all frenzied trying so, to si do their Silas job. like wipes sweat and he, he's like, I'm sorry, were you saying something, Miss Robin? You're doing great, kid. Silas looks like a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> like someone out of another Dirty, century. Dirty. He's like those old pictures of coal miners mm -hmm. who just stare oh, blankly really sadly with their goggles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can't even tell who they are anymore. Um, Okay, I, I, you know, okay. just I'm gonna go probably start in the crew quarters and and the common room is where I'm gonna focus. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, just a reminder, I did find my watch in the crew quarters. Yes, that yes. makes the difference. You and I wasn't the sure the girls' room. I believe the other yeah. one came from uh, Aggie. Aggie. Oh, Gloria. Gloria. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It was Something Gloria, like the the <laughs> conductors. Her, her her watch was the first one mm -hmm. that you found. And then the um, other one I believe was that in... was the waves. The vine was in the women's quarters, which is Gloria and Augie's room okay. underneath one of the beds. Okay, then the first place, if, if I remembered that, uh, mm -hmm. then I'll check the men's quarters. Okay. Um, so you go in the men's quarters. You had searched there before. I think, maybe, did we say you found some Playboys or something in there? I can't remember. <laughs> there was, stuff on the <laughs> there was some stuff. There was some boys stuff in there. Um, but yeah, so you go back in there. Yeah. Um, give me an investigation check. Unless you want to do, do a perception of the room. maybe. Okay. Before. We'll start perception, there. Let's start. Oh, no, it's not great. Ten. A ten. It's a mess. You know, this was the last time you were here as you're going to remember. First of all, it's freezing. 
Mm -hmm. Again, frost on the windows. Now it's starting to get dark. Um, this is the fifth hour of this, you know, uh, <laughs> incredible uh, task you all are taking on. Um, so as you are in that room, it's just you can see your breath in front of your face. Um, everything is gloomy and cold and gray. Uh, and clearly they had packed up as fast as they could and just run out of there. There's still an errant pair of jeans on the ground. The beds are unmade. Uh, you know, personal items are scattered on the ground. I think uh, Robin, knowing that she's going to need something more to help her, she's going to kind of put her hands together and just pull them apart. And as she does, these three glowing orbs appear again. And she's going to use her dancing lights to to fill the room and kind Amazing. of Ooh. go into corners and under beds for because I can move them. Yeah, great. Give me another perception check. Let's try again. Come on. It's Whoa. a 12. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> uh. So, so as the lights dance around, you do notice that's bringing color more into this space. Um, you know, one side of this room, uh, you know, is definitely a, like a teenage boy's side of the room, a young man's room. You're thinking this is probably uh, Charlie, who was the, you know, the porter who was taking your bags and doing kind of general maintenance. The other side is quite a bit more meticulous. Um, this bed is unmade, but you can see there are still hospital corners turned under uh, this side of the bed. This is a, a much more uh, cleanly made. So probably the chef's side of the, the room, <laughs> you're guessing. Hmm. Uh, I, I think Robin would, would suspect that the older, more meticulous person might mm -hmm. have a pocket watch. So that's where okay. she's going to. Give me an investigation check of his. All right. Come on. Is there time for try? Come on. <laughs> I got it. Good. Yes. It's a 22. Uh, Woo! Yay! Yeah, like that. <laughs> um, so nice. you start to go through the. Uh, his bedside table, you know, again, his side is a lot neater and nicer. Things that are scattered underneath his bed probably came from Charlie on the other side. Um, but as you pull out the drawer of his bedside table, it looks a little shallow to you. And indeed you go over and pull out Charlie's and that looks deeper. As you reach down and kind of touch the corner, it moves a little bit, a little bit of a false bottom. As you lift that false bottom out, you see a really beautiful leather pouch. Wow. Uh, whoa. There's the Easter egg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll, I'll open up the pouch. You open up the pouch and inside you do indeed find a pocket watch. Ooh. This one is covered with um, flames that seem to sort of, you know, rise up and surround the sides of the pocket watch. And there's a little red stone, possibly a garnet. Um, I'm just going to open it up and see if uh, there's a picture, an inscription, uh, uh, what time it went out. Um, as you open it up, it is stuck at 2.13 in the morning. Okay. Or 2.13. Oh. Okay. And is there an inscription of any sort or a picture? There is not. Nope. No. Okay. Perfect. Um, cool. Uh, okay. I just, just need one more. Uh, <laughs> but where, where, where? Um, and we did the men's quarters, we did the female's quarters. I mean, my guess would probably be it's in the caboose, maybe, but she doesn't want to go into the caboose without the others. So, uh, she's going to check the common area. Okay. I don't know go back why to the common area. So this is the lounge and the dining area. We can treat it as one sort of space for you. If you'd like to give me a perception check to see if there's anything off. Come on. Be good at perception. Nope, it's a 10. <laughs> you know, you guys slept here the last time you were here, so it's still, you know, got kind of the remnants of whatever blankets and pillows and things that you brought in there. Um, you know, the food that had been left out for you that night uh, is still sort of scattered around the place. Everyone left in such a hurry. No one cleaned up. Um, yes, there are the powder still on the ground, the sugar or whatever flour mm. that you left with human footprints running through that. Um, it's it looks like kind of looking at it now it even makes you a little sad it looks like squatters or Aww. really a disaster happened here to this this beautiful train this has the bookshelf though correct it does yes does it have any side tables or it does do, do those have drawers uh these do not these are okay. very ornate sort of spindly legged things well you know 
mystery was always my favorite book genre and she's going to go over to the bookshelf and she's uh -huh. going to start looking for either false books or really thick books. That's okay, just kind of where her brain goes. She wants to. Um, yeah. Investigation check, please. All right. Come on. Investigation. Don't do me. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a five. Ah, so, oh. there's a lot it's of James Patterson and you just really used to love yeah. James Patterson when you were, you know, <laughs> on those long nights in your internship. Uh, and so you just get a little caught up in reminiscing as you just piece through some of those old uh, <laughs> <laughs> beach yeah. reads. What was and, I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and just sort of lose track of the moment. There. Okay. So that's where we will. If they end. have the jester, like bring them back to. to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You don't have internet, but you have a lot of really cheesy books. So. <laughs> okay. Good to go. um, all right. Turn them up pages back. I told you there's so many pages of prep for the day. Okay. <laughs> um, we have our greasers now, Neb and Feruza. So the first thing you do is go to the luggage and storage car, baggage car there, and uh, begin to search around <laughs> for Greece. And uh, yeah, there is a maintenance cabinet. Um, it is locked with a little padlock. Okay. Well, are we searching for a key or are we just smashing this thing off? When Neb says that, you notice that like Feruza, first of all, is still covered in soot. Like she yes. looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't answer you. Okay, I mean, I can try to chop it off, but I figured you're the one with the big ask, axe and lots of strength. I mean, or we could go look for a key. <laughs> and when you, when Neb says that, Bruza turns to look at you, and you, you know, she's covered in soot, so you would think her normally blue eyes would look like super bright, you know, with all the soot over, but her eyes look, they look kind of a darker blue. And she just says, man lives in a sunlit world that he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. I mean, that's very moving and poetic. Is that, are we supposed to look under the train for something that Feruza? Oh yeah, what's up? Oh, did we, oh, are we even doing our job? What are we doing? Oh. Uh, well, I, I, sorry, you were, you were reciting of... poetry of some sort. It was very pretty. I was reciting poetry, never, are you okay? <laughs> I can That's see, a weird like, question maybe... to ask. I never know how to answer, are you okay, in the last six days that we've had. But no, you really were, like, you stopped and you looked at me and you started talking about, kind of in a very poetic way, our situation about that man knows that there's a place and there's a, you know, that we don't see that's under the place that we are. I was so distracted at first because it was very pretty. I wish I could remember more of exactly what you said, but you talked about an underworld and that it's what? the same, but it's dark. You don't remember any of this? Uh, no. And I'm actually kind of concerned that you actually think I would be talking about something I know absolutely nothing about, Neb. Maybe we should, when we get back, we can ask a... Uh, Robin, maybe she did some sort of an internship with a therapist. Maybe we can have someone sort of make sure you're okay. Because this is really concerning. I, I, I was actually thinking about if, if you had the ability to conjure up like a pot roast. That's what I was doing for the past five minutes. I wasn't really paying attention to being a greaser. That's what I was doing. I mean, after this is done, I can definitely try. I haven't tried the pot roast yet, so we can see. I've just been able to do berries. Okay. I mean, we could definitely talk to Miss Robin, but... And I want to just take a moment and do i recognize what she said because it like what she was describing really does kind of sound parallel to our experience so this um, feels yeah make uh, an intelligence check a history check uh sure that's our third natural 20 of the night <gasps> 25 <gasps> <Marissa. gasps> 
<laughs> Does she recognize it? Oh, um, one thing you will say is you, Bruce was using an, an accent you do not recognize. <laughs> she did not. First of all, it had sort of a lilt. That accent did not sound like it was coming from Fruza. Um, in fact, her whole bearing was completely, not only first you noticed her eyes were darker, um, but when she was saying what she said, um, yeah, that you, you get this sort of feeling that doesn't feel like Feruza. Weird. Okay. I mean, whether or not you brush it off or whether or not you're with it is totally up to Neb, but you know that that wasn't. And do you, does she recognize the the words? Are they from our world, or are they just, you know, uh, sort of from Feruza? Wait a minute. You know what, Neb? You're the one who had the grandfather that used to read you. Yes. Yeah, my great grandfather. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Some of the words, like when she said about, you know, man lives in a summit world that he thinks is reality, but there's there's also another part that's not so bright. It's not so brightly lit. There's something about the words that came from what she sort of just threw out at you that, why does that remind me of a story or something? But that's all I'm gonna give you. <laughs> okay. The, the last thing Neb's gonna do, because. It, it's not that she's worried uh -huh. because we've uh -huh. all gone through really weird changes in the last six days. <laughs> she just doesn't, this is a different kind of change. <laughs> and she's, a, the, so she's just trying to figure it out, but yeah. it, it's not as much concern as it is about, it's, it's weird that you don't remember saying that and she won't get closer to you, but I do want to see, are your eyes still dark or are they normal nope, color again? Normal normal okay Burroughs, are you sure you didn't remember something <laughs> you you really did like like it was kind of the opposite of the the lightning stuff that you do you your eyes got dark and you recited this i, I kind of recognize it but yeah, I'm, I'm too tired to really think about where it where it's from. Like it's from a story that I, you know, it's, I've heard well, so many. <laughs> well, I mean, I honestly, I'm I, I now now I'm concerned because I'm I'm wondering what you saw or what I did or what I mean. So many weird things are happening here. Who knows? Maybe like right? maybe something did happen to me, but it's concerning because I. I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I honestly think that we should maybe revisit that after we figure out this greasing. No, you're right, you're right. We definitely need to do greasing stuff. Um, but yeah, we, but, we should after this. And I, you know okay. what, it could be it could be a concerning thing or maybe this is just some weird new power that you're developing and you know, we'll, we'll get it figured out. But- a poetry but... reciting? Wait, so- <laughs> Well, I call Robin it poetry. Robin can throw light orbs. You can create fire. Silas can move things in his eyes and I can recite poetry. Oh, great. I have a great career waiting for me in New York City. I don't, never mind. <laughs> well, it's Greece. a beat poetry and then also strong person competitions. Both of those, very, very much. Uh, it was, I call it poetry just because of the way that you said it was very poetic, poetic. but it wasn't like iambic pentameter poetic. It was very much impactful kind mm. of thing. And you think it sounded somewhat familiar or was it something that I've never said before here while we're in this world? No. Not that I remember. And, and Neb's gonna take one last moment. She's gonna pull the uh, notebook that she mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. and she's gonna try to write down as much of what Maeve said as she can remember. Okay. Okay. As accurately as she can. As just, that Feruza said. Of the Feruza oh, said, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Feruza said as accurately as uh -huh. she can, just because okay. she knows we're about to spend a lot of time <laughs> with oil and grease and things. And it's just, gonna go is, away, yeah. Yeah, okay. so she'll she'll write it down and then That's tuck it away <laughs> and then All right. go. All right. Maintenance that's... cabinet with a lock, padlock on it. 
So anyway, okay. um, mm -hmm. uh, that was the thing I was asking you before you decided to um, the channel Shakespeare was, do we want to go look for a key or do you think we should just, do you think you could just smash the lock off? I'll smash, Neb. <laughs> I love it. She's going to grab her ax and literally say, you might want to back up for this just in case. I will back up. And All right. Swing at the lock. Stationary, you know, advantaged attack. Ooh, it's stationary so this is an attack. This is an it's attack. an attack. You are attacking roll. the padlock with your Okay, axe. so she's going to have to. <sighs> and as she's breathing, like Neb, you're seeing, she's definitely getting bigger. But there's a part of Bruza now that realizes she doesn't have to worry about where she is. She will always fit the space that she's in when she grows. Her hair starts flying, flickering. There's like little lightning strands inside and her eyes start glowing. And when she does that, loud as heck, like like literally like a boot, like a loudspeaker. So she's raging. Yeah, and the, I mean, the whole car sort of shakes. You hear the rattle of the, the different equipment along the sides as everything sort of, you know, vibrates with Haruza's energy. This is scary, but it's scary in a fun way. Like, I like <laughs> this way more than the poetry reciting. <laughs> poetry. <laughs> okay. All right. An advantage that. attack. Oh, goodness. Damn, I needed that advantage because that was a 13. What was that? The first one's a 15. Great. Let's see. The it's second. It's not hard. It's just a. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? The same exact thing of 15. Hey! You hit. You absolutely okay, hit. That's good. Your axe just like smashes that things to bits. It goes flying across the room. Even Neb, you know, maybe it zooms past your face, kind of Whoa. just missing you as it, you know, bangs onto the door at the far end and clatters to the ground. Um, the the locker itself, it just it's bent in on one side of the door, but it sort of. <laughs> you know so sadly swings open uh revealing inside a whole bunch of maintenance tools so um you're gonna see the giant wrench that you need to get off certain covers and things to be able to get in there and grease you're gonna see you know basically paint cans filled with grease with these you know like uh the the scrub brushes you use for washing dishes, but they're covered in this oil. You're gonna see tubs of different kinds. Some of them are in jugs that you pour out. Others are in like squirt guns, uh, ca caulking guns that allow you to kind of shoot it deeply into long tubes. Um, you have basically all of these different uh, pieces here ready for you to use. Oh, perfect. We can get this together before Robin comes back and breeze over our shoulder about what we're not doing. <laughs> Can't tell I mean, us reciting poetry. <laughs> Robin I mean, probably came back and saw the broken open cabinet uh, later, but <laughs> took the giant wrench she needed. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, let's, let's gather up what we need and start the rounds that Maeve told us about. All right, fantastic. Um, as you start to do this, I need dexterity checks from each of you to see how oh. well you do at greasing up these uh, oh different areas of the train. Neb is gonna stand with Feruza for uh -huh. a moment at the first place uh -huh. that she <laughs> needs to, and she'd kind of been banking on, I'm small, I can reach into places. <laughs> oh, oh, no, this is, this is gonna be more than that. And uh -huh. like she scratches her head and then reaches into her pocket and is, is just kind of uh, worrying on the rock that she's got and then uh -huh. she's, gonna, she's gonna know she's gonna need a lot of help with this <laughs> and i'm gonna cast a lot of help on myself of... <laughs> and no. uh Feruza, what you see is uh, uh which, which is the one that gives me dexterity there it is uh what you see is just for the briefest of moments uh neb's eyes look like cat's eyes mm. and then they and then they go back as I yeah, uh, I mean you can't have... judge Feruza's eyes for change. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Your eyes are gonna change. Like I, there on. was no judgment. It was just no. surprising. That's all. Um, <laughs> yes. So I now have advantage on dexterity checks, which is all good. Right. I have a negative to all of my dexterity <laughs> checks, so I need it. Uh, what did all you right. need again? I'm sorry. Dexterity checks. You can all do right. sleight of hand if you would prefer it. Mm -hmm. I don't, is I there anything I can give them from giving them specific instructions on how to do this stuff? Um, 
yeah, we don't let this be take. Let's do, um, <laughs> if not, that's okay too. I, I sent them on their way with you, it. So. Let's have you do just a basic wisdom check and we'll see if you okay. gave them any points. And if Silas yes. may, just yes. as they're like making the rounds, <laughs> yes. Silas is uh, just gonna, he's, he's like kind of mumbling to himself the entire time and uh -huh. nobody can really hear anything he's saying or doing. And he uh, is just like, <laughs> Sir. And then he and then he he just starts kind of like saying these, you know, just like some are loving, had me a blast, some are loving, happen so fast. And he's singing both parts to himself. And then he kind of like enhances it just a little uh -huh. bit with minor illusion, uh -huh. where where like the wella, 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 who you know, and it's like all of the, all of that coming yeah. in and uh get a little bit of inspiration. Um, he'll, he'll do it long enough to get both of them okay. with a d6 for at least, you know, one of these checks. All right. You both <laughs> have a d6. Um, so yes, Maeve, uh, 14, the 14, um, the only little pearl of wisdom that Maeve sent you off with is she, you know, ripped the page out of the book and gave it to you. Um, is just that like, <laughs> this is dangerous work. Like people lose limbs doing this kind of work. This is the hard stuff. Um, you know, one of my favorite old timey shorts is called Shake Hands with Danger. And it is, uh, oh I believe from, um, uh, you know, whoever makes the big, you know, bobcat, you know, whatever those things are. And it's just a bunch of people being maimed and murdered, <laughs> maimed and killed from working on giant machines incorrectly. Um, so all she said was like, have fun, don't die. Don't die. We'll do our best. All, All right. right. Dexterity okay. checks. Um, Neb, you have advantage. You both have D6, a D6 from uh, the inspiration oh, goody. of Summer Lovin', uh, if you would like to use it. All right, Neb. Yeah. I'm going to use it, even though, thankfully, with advantage, I got an 18. Mm. But I'm going to I'm gonna throw this on here because, well, that's a 1. So it's a, a, a 19. 19. All right, a 19. Not in Neb. there. What was for you, Feruza? 7. With the D6? With the D6. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we so, go. Geez. Um, Neb, you immediately start getting in. There are these little ball bearings that sort of are underneath mm. a lot of the different moving parts that require a very light, slippery kind of oil. So you take the kind of smaller cans and begin going in. Again, you are smaller. You can get into these little nooks and crannies. And, and you're finding it is hard to find just the right place where you're not spilling. But you're able to, with your smaller limbs, kind of get in there and, and get into those tight little corners. Uh, Feruza, nearby, you're dealing with the much bigger, heavier duty areas. Mm -hmm. um, there is one particular area where you have to hold up a piece of it, pull out the rod inside, and then you're gonna have to, you know, reach through with your scrub brush and make sure that you get everything scrubbed up. But it is two mm -hmm. separate pieces and you don't quite notice that. As you have your hand in this machine scrubbing, mm -hmm. trying to put the oil, you lose a little bit of your grip. You are slippery from the oil yourself and the two pieces begin to pull apart. Give me a dexterity saving throw to pull your arm out. Oh, goody, I do have an advantage on this. Thank hey, you. Hey, go for it. Okay, let's see. Are you kidding me? <gasps> Shake hands with danger. Oh my God. Nine, no wait, nine, seven, seven, 11. Oh no. Oh, oh no! The first one was a three. Your arm is inside this piece, oh! two separate pieces. As the one heavy piece of machinery starts to slip, it immediately cracks the bone of your arm, Ow. lodging your arm between the two pieces. Um, you scream. I'm going to take the poetic license to say, just ripples through the rest of this area. Um, but however, Stoker Silas, don't hear it. Robin, way at the back of the train. Don't hear it. Maeve, where have you set up camp? I think study? I probably stayed put where in the I was. engine with Silas. <laughs> then you don't hear it. It is huffing, puffing loud in there with the steam and the fire. Only Neb hears it. Neb, you turn over. You see Feruza's mangled hand sticking out, just violently shaking as the tendons and nerves and blood begins to drip down her fingertips, caught between these two pieces. 
I'm gonna drop whatever I got and rush on over. Oh, um, uh, 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 we gotta get you out of here. We gotta get you out of here. Oh. Um, I um, I am not strong enough to pull this apart. Can, can, um, uh, I, I I need to be something way stronger for this. Um, <laughs> and she's gonna frantically think about uh, oh, what what's stronger? What's stronger than me? What what what's me. what's super strong? <laughs> what can I do? Theresa, you're just screaming. Well, Neb's like. <gasps> Uh, and she's imagining gonna, she, things. She's gonna think about that moose that she turned into a while back with the the big uh, <laughs> antlers and everything, because that that yep. was super strong and super big. And maybe mm -hmm. being a moose will also keep Feruza calm. So she's <laughs> immediately is just suddenly there's a moose standing there, very Again, looking wide eyed. That heavy breath, huge presence, the smell of it. Um, as Neb, you come over, you can use your nose, hook your horns, whatever you'd like to just sort of lift the pressure of that second piece up off Feruza's arm. Feruza shaking. You are now released. You pull your arm out. Every move is agony. You can see the bone sticking out through your skin where it was broken in two as you cradle it into yourself. I can't use my arm, Neb. Mm. <sighs> There's a moment where Neb thinks about staying as a moose and like moose. trying to convince. Like, Neb, I know it's Neb. <laughs> yeah, trying. Like, how do I convince Feruza? Like, get on my back and I'll take her somewhere. But there's. <laughs> Feruza's just looking at her arm, like, oh my god! I can't and she's gonna, it. she's gonna not be a moose anymore and go, stay here. I'll go get Silas. And it's I'm not going anywhere. All right, you're gonna run. You run up as you're screaming and waving your hands. You know, again, the heat and the pressure and the noise from this engine. You know, you catch Silas's eye. Silas, you you know, you move over to the platform. And you see Neb there, what? dragging your attention. What, what is it? We we need your healing. We need your healing. Come 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 come. And uh, uh, Sil hurt. Silas, whatever the quickest path is, yeah. Silas just takes off running. You jump down. Even. They're not far. They're just in front of the engine, working on some of the the other pieces. And you see Feruza again, the blood dripping down. Now you know falling into the snow. It immediately makes you a bit queasy. Mm. Do I need to roll anything? <laughs> I don't think so. We just said you'd have some some disadvantages. Yes, yes, yes. So I um, I um, see it as I'm on my way down. Like as soon as I see it, mm -hmm. um, and sh I'm within you know uh, thirty feet of her. Or so uh, I'm going to say, oh, it's 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 really not as bad as it looks. <laughs> and um, and fired. so as a as a bonus action, I am uh, using a healing word there. Okay. And, and, and it, it's don't touch is it. your healing word or yeah yeah and uh with that that's going to restore eight eight hit points, points of damage oh. but so then by... um uh, we didn't roll her damage on that no. actually that's i should right, have yeah. hold on let me roll your damage with your i mean the description bow. was damaging enough was that's damaging all we really needed. Yeah, yeah yeah all right <laughs> We've oh made some boy. assumptions. That is 12 bludgeoning damage. Oh, um, okay. So, so you'll get a little bit. eight Six. of it back from Silas. But, but Silas. then as soon as Silas mm -hmm. actually gets there to where mm -hmm. he's close enough to touch, um, he, he's like, oh, no, no, seriously, it's not that bad. And he, But he doesn't look. Uh, and he's like, I'm sorry, I've got to touch it. And then he, he, uh, he just puts his finger on it. And then there is another... Uh, with with an action there, he is going to do one more, and that is going to restore five hit points. Okay. So for Ruza, as you're looking, at, it is it is again extraordinarily painful, even as it's healing. It's almost as if uh, an invisible force, an invisible doctor, pops your bone back into place. Um, as you scream, though, you can see like the oh, it was like in the fifth element or in. Uh, 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 Starship Troopers, where it, like it starts to like knit itself back together. You can see your muscles slide back over, and the skin begin to you know skin over. And then, and as you slowly begin to move your joints and move them around until the pain disappears. Uh, are, are we okay? All better? And when you say that to Feruza, she doesn't respond. 
Wait, I, I don't know if I can look. Like, is she all better? Somebody... I mean, she looks Anybody? a lot better. Just like, oh, this looks so much better. Thank you. I didn't know what to do except um get it off of Car her. Carissa, but... are you okay? And Carissa turns to look at Silas. And again, her usual turquoise eyes are dark, blue. And she says to you, she humans cannot be trusted. Humans are born of angel and demon. And demons pervert whatever they touch. The uh, I'm going uh, to just grab Silas's coat arm whatever is right there and go she did this before is she like in shock did she break her arm before no the last time it just happened it just happened Feruza Feruza ah! oh thank you so much thank you I don't know what you did Silas. well I like healed you but then you started like I don't even know it's like you were possessed or something it's like you know the power of Christ compels you Neb has reached into her uh, bag again and pulled out her sketchbook and has <laughs> written down okay, exactly what Feruza was saying gotcha. about Wait, what, what, what did she say and... something about angels and demons and da Vinci code and what, what did she say is that, is, is that how you fixed me no no I just used yes. my inborn <laughs> magic but you just started I mean I've never healed anyone and then had them say weird stuff like that before I Silas, you begin to hear a, a whistle coming from the uh, cabin, the, oh, uh, the oh, engine. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, oh, some God, steam are, are escaping okay from a random Are we valve. okay here? And then Silas starts, we're, like, climbing back up. We're okay. We're okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank as you, he walks, Silas. As he God. walks away, I'll look at Feruza and say, um, Did you first see off, that I'm glad your arm is better. That was scary. Are you, is, is everything Okay. I'm just really shaken up. I mean, I, I, I've gotten attacked a few times by monsters here and stuff, but I mean, now I see how Miss Robin felt when Steve had an issue with her. Mm. That was very scary to hear every bone in your arm break at the same time. Oh, do, 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 do. I'm glad. Uh, There's uh, only uh, a couple uh, people that will get that joke. Sorry. I'm <laughs> glad that I was able to get uh, Silas and Silas was able to heal you. Did you need a moment before anything? Oh, you mean like to, to calm down? You have I mean, more greasing well, yeah, like, to do. Uh, you know, um, before we either go back to work or we talk about other things. So, so hey, Ma hey, Maeve, real quick, like as Silas. Yes. Like, Feruza just got her arm like mangled, and she is just losing her mind down there for some reason. Like, I don't know. I I, I got to keep this fire going. They might need some help because whatever she was talking about. She might like her neck might turn backwards, and she might start crawling up some walls, and then Neb might be in danger. And then he just keeps, he does not explain any further and he keeps going on the fire. Oh my God, I just, I'm so shaken up. I have okay, to pull it together, Neb. I had to pull it together. I wasn't concentrating and I didn't realize that these two parts had to be separate or together or in my hand slipped. I'm, That's all that happened. It was just I'm, my, you know, I'm absent minded here. I got to clean my glasses off. Clean my glasses off. So yeah. I mean, I mean it, we're all new at this, but, but yeah. Never again. Remember a, a moment ago when we were trying to open up the maintenance closet and I told you about, you spouted off some poetry? Oh, yeah. You, you told me that I was mumbling or jumbling something. You did it again. Just Maybe now. I, when I was screaming in pain? I was probably conjuring up demons or something. I was so I was hurting. Well, it's interesting was, that you say demons. So Silas was here. So uh, there's a second person who can now corroborate. And I'll, I'll look at the book and show her mm -hmm. what I've written down about the humans can't be trusted and humans are born of angels and demons and demons pervert whatever they touch. Because like, as it was happening at that point, she's like, I got to write this down. So like, he healed you. And then your eyes got dark again. And then that's what you said. You said something different this time. I'm taking mental sort of few breaks, you're saying, to recite this, this, and she points to ne uh, Neb's book, this truly uplifting poetry? <laughs> what are you talking about, Neb? I mean, this is, are you sure this isn't like, maybe maybe stuff you thought I heard? Maybe, it's the, you know what? It's been a very long day. We haven't had anything to eat. We're sleepy. Maybe, maybe I was just screaming in pain and this is what you thought you were. 
<laughs> well, I mean, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, what is I, I, never... I would say you're right, except this time Silas was here and heard the same thing. Silas heard me say say this. This we were, we were both here. He thought you were possessed or something because you were talking about angels and demons. Or quoting Dan Brown. Or quoting Dan Brown. <laughs> I have to read some of those books sometime. Once oh again, I don't know if oh there's, boy. this might not be. Which Robin is now reading. <laughs> In the lounge. Yes. Smattered amongst the Patterson, you have some brown. It's okay. yeah. just, just the highlights of the uh, oh, yeah. airport literature. And of course, genre. a couple of Nora <laughs> Roberts. I mean, let's not. You know. <laughs> All paperbacks, though. All the paperbacks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I dog-eared did... portions of Nora Roberts. Do you think it has anything to do with what we saw was happening to us back in the cave? Like we all started, we saw like these versions of ourselves that were really weird. Do you think it has anything to do with that? Am I, am I turning into some really bad poet? I mean, I don't think it's bad. First off, I've, now that I've heard more, I don't think it's actually poetry. It almost sounds like prophecy or Or a little bit of both. I'm not sure. I still don't really recognize where it's from, but it's 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 very familiar. And I mean, obviously, this has something to do with everything. I I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, I I I I I hope this isn't. And she points to again to your notes. I'm hoping this isn't some prophecy because I I'm sorry, Ned, but I'm I'm I don't I don't, I don't know what know what this is. I mean, I don't maybe know what maybe it is. Maybe we'll know, or somebody, maybe, maybe, maybe Robin will know what, what this is. Or maybe well, we can figure out where it's coming from, because I, I don't know. Well, you know what? It, I mean, when it happens, it doesn't look like you're in pain or anything. You just kind of go somewhere else and say these things and come back. So let's go back to doing all the greaser stuff. And all right. we will got talk it. to everybody when when we've got lights and power and heat. OK. You got it. Have you got it. Learned your lesson not to <laughs> shake hands with danger. Uh, <laughs> you I mean, I've shaken hands with danger a couple of times. Couple of times. So. <laughs> yeah. oh, um, you continue down this list, this time choosing to work together, um, using, uh, you know, again, physics, levers, you know, mooses, <laughs> mooses, mice. Uh, I can't, I can't. Uh, turn into anything okay, anymore, again. but I am still concentrating on my my extra help. So okay. if I have to be de dexterous You're working, again, working together yeah. now allows you to basically you know avoid. You know, Feruza will hold the thing while Nev mm -hmm. greases it. However, you've worked out a system. Yeah. You're able to find your way uh, and complete your rounds. Um, it does, of course, take this full time, mm -hmm. uh, the four to five hours that is there. Let's move over to Maeve, who's been sitting in the engine cabin, listening. It's it's hot. It's humid in there. Um, it, the sound of it. There's you know At Silas panting. It is very yes, it's very warm. Uh, but you can always just stick your head out to the side and get a cool breeze as well. Um, and being right here next to all of the controls and all of these different lever levers and gauges allows you as you you know reference things in this book to see exactly where they are. Um, so go ahead and give me an intelligence check. <laughs> Man. Uh, so so as like Silas is getting very, very bored yes. like with this job. <laughs> so, got so, one job. So so as he yeah, is like trying, job, trying his best to, to focus on uh, everything uh, he <laughs> Did is you let the flame go out again? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. He's just like, it's getting hot in here, so I better go stoke. And uh, as, as he's doing this. <laughs> like, good, um, that's the right way to finish that song, otherwise some... we would have had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you think I am, Maeve, but I like you. And then uh, going to be a D6 to any role. Uh, okay. that is because Silas keeps all of his clothes on, Maeve gets inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm at a 15 before that, and that takes me up to a 19. A 19. Um, so looking through, and you, you know, you found a little pencil or something, maybe even a little piece of charcoal, so you can make little notes and little diagrams for yourself as you're beginning to speed through this book and, and really starting to wrap your mind around how this works. Um, 
by the end of this sort of period, it's, it takes you the full three, four hours of just really studying and looking through and going back and booking again and maybe going and testing a knob and seeing it. You think you have a pretty good um, hold on what you're going to have to do. So you look over and you see a lever all the way off to the side, which you believe is the Johnson lever. So this is what's going to determine whether you go forward, backward, or in neutral. Um, there is the throttle, which is right above the firebox. You pull this out to give yourself steam and, and power to go forward, and then you close it up a little bit if you just, again, want to coast. But this is something that you're going to be constantly adjusting. You'll need a little more as you approach a hill, a little less as you coast down it on the other side. Um, then on the left, there is the brake. Uh, this is bright yellow. This is going to be a pull towards you uh, to engage the brake and then uh, gripping a handle to then release it. Um, it has these notches in it like a gear shift so that as you pull it, uh, it actually locks into place in these different places and you have to pull this handle to then move it again. Um, choo -choo -choo. Um, you also Yay. notice that there is the injector valve, so you can turn it to use the steam that's being created to either pump water from the tender into the boiler or to use that steam to power the pistons in the engine and turn the wheels. Um, so you know that when, again, when you're coasting and maybe you don't need the steam power in that moment, it's a good idea to turn and uh, pump some water in. There's a water gauge that is going to show you exactly what your water level is. Um, you find it's good practice to keep it at about half. So when it starts to get down, good idea to shift over and get a little more. It's a good idea to stoke that fire before you hit a big hill. So you're not doing it on the uphill when everything can shift around. Um, let's see, other things you've learned in this. There was one other thing I was going to include. Um, well, we'll get it there. You did a good job studying. Um, you're pretty sure you're going to be able to do this, but it is feel, right? There are good practices, but you're just going to have to kind of feel the way this engine moves. From this, you are now proficient in trains. Um, train you can, proficiency. You have proficiency yes. in Yay. trains. Um, or at least steam locomotives, I should say. <laughs> um, so in steam locomotives, you have a proficiency. It will be, um, an, you know, it will continue to be kind of an intelligence check, but we'll have it be, actually, I'll see. I have to figure out exactly what it'll be, but you are proficient with them. Um, and so, yeah, any checks that you have to do as you start to try to, I think, instinctually feel what this train is doing and whether it needs the throttle in or out the, you know, uh, what you need to do if it needs a little break, uh, you feel fairly confident that you will be able to do it. As I'm going through the book, I'm yeah. making like uh, little inappropriate illustrations <laughs> for whoever reads this next, uh, uh, along with my notes. Fantastic. <laughs> um, little, little men on snails. I mean, <laughs> I, I got to say, I mean, this book is full of like thrusters and lubing. and I, They, they of... call the lever the Johnson. That's I all they do. The Johnson. the Johnson lever. And you know, Silas is a yeah. stoker. You know, it's yeah. all kinds of fun words. I mean, I'm a midnight yeah, toker. Right. Anything I, it's just, it's going to be absolute fifth grade humor absolutely all throughout Aww. because it's entertaining me which is the important thing in this i love it well it allows you to study uh you know deeply and uh through that full hour you're nice and cozy in the cabin there um you are also getting sort of the residual soot and steam and, and everything coming towards you so i don't know if your hair has frizzed out a bit from that probably a bit yeah a bit you were a bit sweaty it's got some texture There's gonna be to some it it's like a salt spray yeah. but uh yeah but your muscles but, are real loose. Yeah, that, which feels nice. <laughs> and your sinuses, been, yeah. A lot of time in cold and cold yes. and Maeve don't always get along so well. So Maeve, as you're just finishing this up and you're kind of, you know, maybe put the book down and give a little sigh, like, okay, if, you know, I, you feel like it's in your, in, your, in your brain, in your bones a little bit. Um, the others begin to come back because mm -hmm. where each of you are, Robin, where you're reading suddenly, the light above you turns on. Feruza <gasps> and Neb, as you are, you know, greasing up the last few little joints, you see the lights come on in the windows above and feel the kind of kick of the generators come oh through. God. And in the front, Maeve and Silas, um, the lights above the gauges that illuminate those so that they can be read in the dark also pop into life. 
Oh. And I think with that, <laughs> we want to as, as soon as the lights come on, yes. Neb is going to hold up a hand and be like, ah, high five, we did it. And, <laughs> and of course, my high five is like barely right? at your oh, right. right. As you other arm, arm, other arm. As you all other arm. I told you not to go get injured. I told you to do well, one thing. You had one job. Oh, and God. you know what? Look, we're not injured. And then where's the blood from? You know what? Who can tell? <laughs> you all converge on the back to the engine room, the cabin. Uh, you're looking around. Maeve's hair is just sort of flying out. <laughs> she and Silas are sweaty and covered in soot. It's a look. Robin's got a little flush in her cheeks from reading Nora Roberts. Um, <laughs> We're covered in grease. Neb and Bruiser are covered Sorry. in grease and blood. Um, but the lights are on. And with that, we will say thank you. This is the end of this Yay! chapter of Children of Erte. Please remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Next week, we have On the Erte, but we will return in two weeks to continue our adventure. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.